Hey guys. <laughs> um, look what we're doing. Zang Band, version 4.1.3. I've been putting off playing this for a while now. Uh, playing it for this channel. I've played it before. This was one of the very first roguelikes I played a number of years ago. Uh, about two or three years ago now. I had a warrior, a human warrior, who's actually, I haven't, didn't lose that game. He's on like level 70 or something and he's doing fine. But um, I abandoned it at some point. We're going to try out Ang Band version 4.1.3. I've been reticent to try it for a number of reasons. One, unlike Moria, uh, let's actually start with that. Uh, this is the, not the sequel to Moria. This was, a, a, to me, it's a variant of Moria. It is, if you watch those Moria videos, we have 158 of them up on this channel, uh, literally. Um, this is advanced Moria, essentially. It is, uh, they took the code, ran with it, and made it a bigger, um, more in-depth game. Um, also has color graphics, look at that. Compared to Moria, which was pure monochrome, this one has uh, various color graphics. A lot of other advantages to this game, but we'll get to that in a minute. One of the reasons I was hesitant, uh, you might be able to tell here, is that um, it doesn't run in one window. Unlike Moria, which had a single window, this brings up like, I don't know, seven or eight windows. And you can actually reorganize these as you see fit. You can make it your own. I don't want to mess with that right now, uh, but you can do that. Uh, the reason I've been hesitant is because unlike when I record Moria, where I record the window. Here I'm recording the display, which means the entirety of the thing, uh, the entirety of my, my display is up, and I, and I don't know how well a 4K display, how good it's going to look when we, when we dumb it down to 1080p, which is what I intend to do for my outputs. But let's assume it's going to be okay. Um, if you don't know anything about Moria or Angband, um, to be honest, I would suggest you check out the Moria videos first. Um, they'll give you a basis, a grounding in what we're doing here. Um, I'm still going to try and explain things as we go, but I may not explain them as in depth as I did in the in the Moria games. Let's dive in. Um, I also want to set at the outset some expectations on in terms of this. With Moria, I had a new video up every day. That is because I recorded all 158 episodes before I even started the channel. Um, I can't guarantee I can get one of these videos up every day. I'm going to see what happens. Um, but I also intend to intersperse my Angband play with other roguelikes as we go. I don't want to just have, for the next six months, just Angband videos going up, even if we do one a day. Um, so expect these to be intercut with, um, well, not intercut, but uh, interspersed with other videos going up of, of, of smaller roguelikes, which we will continue. Between Angband and other roguelikes, the intention is still to have one new video a day. We'll see if that can be maintained or not. Maybe I'll have more than that. We'll see. Okay. Um, I don't think you can see uh, the file up here. I, don't, I guess you can, yeah. We're not recording a window. You're, we're recording the whole screen. You can see my mouse and everything. So I'm going to go to File, and we're going to start a new game. Um, Angband is a, is a roguelike. It is a role-playing game. We can choose to play any kind of character we want. Um, it uses the D&D, &D, Dungeons & Dragons basic, um, not basic, but the Dungeons & Dragons uh, six characteristics, strength, intelligence, wisdom, dexterity, and constitution. A lot of the, the rules are very D&D-ish. And I've given a lot of debate when I was approaching this game as to what type of character we want to play. Uh, on the one hand, I have 158 episodes up of Moria, which is very similar to this game, playing a human paladin. And on that, by that logic, playing a paladin, a human paladin, it seems like a really bad idea. We've already kind of done that. And playing something else would give us a completely new, really new perspective on the genre. On the other hand, playing a paladin will let us do two things pretty definitively. One, we should be able to make it pretty far so I can show off a lot of the game because we're already familiar with how to play a Paladin based on Moria, at least at least the basics. It will be different, obviously, in terms of uh, this game versus Moria. But we should be able to make it further than we can, say, playing a Mage, which I may die in three episodes from. Um, the second reason I'm considering it is that uh, it'll give us a great basis to compare and contrast Angband with Moria because we'll have very specific similarities. There were, I've played a paladin recently, uh, recently being the last six months or so, briefly in Angband, and was amazed that a lot of the complaints I had in Moria, or at least a lot of the things I put on a wish list, were actually implemented here in Angband. Uh, so I think I'm going to play a paladin again. Uh, I hope that doesn't make anybody groan and be like, oh Christ, I don't want to see another goddamn paladin. But um, I think it'll give us a, a lot of points where we can say, hey, look how it's changed, look how it's evolved. Um, I am not going to play a human, though. Um, it turns out paladins can be human or half-elf. I didn't know that when I made my Moria version. Um, so we're going to play a half-elf because they get infravisions. Let's press B for half-elf. Let's uh, click into the window, maybe, and press B. There you go. Um, sustains dexterity. So we can see some things about it. Um, 
he starts to strength normal. He'll have his intelligence will be one higher than normal. His wisdom will be one lower. His dexterity will be one higher. His constitution one lower. Um, looks like he has minus one to hit, maybe uh, plus five to shoot, plus five to throw. I'm not quite sure what those mean exactly. He'll have a basic ten sided die for his hit points every time he levels up. In terms of unmodified from being a paladin, we haven't put in the class yet, so it'll get modified in a minute. Um, it'll take us 110 percent as much experience as it would to, if we played a human to go up a level. It gets a few bonuses here. Disarm traps is plus two. Using devices, plus three. Saving throws, plus three. Stealth that's versus magic. Um, stealth, plus one. We're a little sneakier. But this is the one main characteristic I was interested in. Infravision to 20 feet. So we'll be able to see hot-blooded monsters out two squares, even if we're in pitch darkness. Um, his digging is normal. His searching is plus three. And sustains dexterity means our dexterity can't be drained, at least as I understand it, which sounds pretty fucking awesome to me. Let's take that. Try pressing enter. Yeah. Now we can choose our uh, class, and we are going to go with the paladin, as I said, so we get to see some more final, uh, final-ish stats. We'll have strength plus one, constitution plus one, and intelligence is going to drop a bit. That's fine. Um, I know all the other uh, things it comes. Learns divine magic will let us cast cleric type spells, holy spells. Miracles, prayers, call them what you will. As you can see, though, versus playing a human warrior, which is the absolute most basic uh, character you can play, we need 145% as much... Uh, we need an extra 45% experience to level up each time than we would if we were playing a human warrior, which is the one thing I did play in Angband before I made it really far, but we're going to try this. Let's hit enter. Uh, let's do a standard roller. Should we do that? This is point base is recommended. Let's let's play point base. This is here's another differentiation right here we can look at from Moria. With Moria, you only have the option to roll randomly to get your characteristics for your for your character, but we can do it differently here with this point base. So let's try that. It's just recommending it. Let's try it. Point based. Um, one second. My cat's trying to get in the room. Let me just let her in, so she doesn't think I'm shunning her. Come on in, babe. You're fine. All right, here we go. All right. We are a paladin, a gallant. We have 16 hit points. We have one spell point. We are 30 years old. We're 4 foot 10. Woo, tall as hell. Uh, weight 11 stones, 21 pounds. I don't know what I don't know what that translates to. 131 pounds maybe? I don't know. I don't know how much a stone is. Anyways, we can see right now um, total cost 20. I guess it, I, is this telling us so it looks like it's already spent our points for us if we want to. I'm pressing left right now. I can move this uh, little box up and down using the directional arrows on the keyboard. And going to any one, I can pull... If I press left, it pulls um, a strength point out because I'm pointing at strength. If I push right, it puts it back in. And as you can see, it modifies the cost we have. But I think we spent 20 out of 20 if we just take this as our basis. Do we want to take this as our basis? No. Let's put our intelligence down by one. Maybe we can't. Maybe we can't go less than that. I mean, that's our minimum. We have dexterity to spend if we want to. You know, maybe we'll just take the basic it gave us. Why not? I wouldn't mind getting my wisdom and constitution up, kind of like Sir Kinnerath had, but we have some good dexterity and good strength. Let's just take this as is. Our wisdom is not great. Our stealth, as you can see, is bad. A lot of the things are written in red. I assume that means they're bad. But I'm not entirely sure. Our melee damage with our bare fist is 1d1 plus 2. That means roll a one-sided die, which will yield 1, and add 2. So we do 3 damage on a hit. Our to hit is 23 plus 4. I don't know quite, I don't, I don't know quite how to read all of this, to be honest. I'll try and do some research in between rounds and eventually get back to you with more. Um, we have 120 pounds extra we can carry before we are um, problematic. Uh, we're carrying too much. Our mother was of the Nandor, whatever that means. You are one of several children of a serf. You are a credit to the family. You have hazel eyes, straight blonde hair, and a dark complexion. So we're not going to, I guess, modify this. Let's just take the character it gave us. I don't mind this. Our speed is normal. Blah, blah, blah. Let's hit enter. Enter to accept. Enter a name for your character. Let's go with another sir. We are a sir... Kiri. That's how, I, that's how I got my name last time, wasn't it? I was petting my cat, Kiri, and came up with Kirgrath and modified that to Kinderath. And here she, Kinderath, and here she is again, vying for my affections. Um, her secret cat name is Gorshnak Darkfang. So maybe we'll go with Sir Gorshnak. Gorsh. Sir Gorshar. Sir Gorshar. Sir Gas sucks. Let's give him a good name. Sir. Sir Gors. Sir Gorston. All right, good enough. Sir Gorston. 
doesn't sound very half elvish, but Maeus is human name. He inherited his father's name. His mother was the elf. Uh, Kiri, I love you, but you can't be in my map in my lap right now. Come on right here. Okay, there you go. You're all set. Accept the character history? Yes, that's fine. All right. S to start over, escape to step back, or any other key to continue. Let's continue. I hope to God you can read this in 1080p. I'm going to find out the hard way, of course, when I output these videos. I know this is readable. I did a test, but I didn't do a test on text this small. As you can see, in our current main window, we have sort of a map of the place. And if you were watching our, Ang our Moria video before, you can see a key difference right now. Holy shit, there's graphics. You don't have to play an ASCII. I may play an ASCII for parts of it. I may play an ASCII for all of it, to be honest. I kind of prefer it. But for the start, let's try it in the graphics mode. See what it's like, because that is such a key difference from Moria. We went from monochrome ASCII graphics to, holy shit, colorful, pretty graphics. We can actually change those if we wanted to. I'm not necessarily going to do too much, but let's just see. Um, visibility. You can turn on or off the windows here. This is what we've chosen to have on. I'm not going to mess with it right now. I'm going to accept the default. Um, options, graphics. But we do have different... We, we could go with original tiles. Holy shit, that's terrible. We do not want to go with original tiles. Adam Bolt's tiles. Decent, but come on, man. The other stuff is better. David Gervais's tiles. Eh, that's not bad. But I like better the other ones we had. Nomad's tiles. No offense, Nomad, but yikes. I look like a chick as well. And shock bolts tiles, which are the, which is a pretty set. You can also go with, of course, Kiri, I love you, but come on, man. You're a... Uh, you can also go with ASCII. That is what it looks like in the ASCII mode. Now, the reason you might want to prefer ASCII mode, if you're asking why would you even bother, look at the, the discrepancy in terms of how much we can see. If we go shock bolts tiles... Oh, well, there you go. You have to shrink it down to this size to be able to fit as much information on. And at this size, it's not so pretty, is it? It's not so easy to to view. Um, how do we get it back to the to the uh, tile multiplier? We want to go. Uh, I think it was like four by four. Nope. Uh, uh, tile multiplier. <laughs> Let's at least learn this shit. Learn this shit now rather than later. How about four by two? Nope. Tile multiplier. How about three by three? Nope. Tile multiplier. Three by one. Nope. What the fuck was it? I may have to go with the ASCII if I can't get this back. Two by two. I think it was like two by three or something. Like that looks that looks close, but it's not right, is it? Is it? I don't think so. I'm not sure there's a... Uh, Maybe that is it. That's one by one? Yeah, I guess so. Maybe maybe that was it. Tile multiplier. What was it? Two by two? Meh. I don't know how to get it back, to be honest, guys. I think we messed it up a little bit, and I apologize. Um, enable nice graphics. What if you click that? Oh. That's what it was. Nice graphics. And then we have a tile. Maybe it was. I don't know. Three by three? No. Uh, graphics. <laughs> you annoyed yet with me? You should be. I really messed it up. Um, two by two. Holy jumped up Jesus, did I ever fuck this up? Uh, two by one. That's not terrible. Ah. <sighs> I don't know what the default is. I wish I wish could put it back to default. Perfect. <laughs> Screenshot, yeah. All right, three by one. I think it's it's got to be three by three. I mean, I just don't know what else it could be. No, nope. two by two by two. I promise you, we're almost done with this fucking fucking around. I swear it. That's what we're going with for now, because holy fuck, I'm tired of messing with it. We get almost as much uh, on the screen as we need. Use the numpad to move around. If you're not sure what something is, you can press the uh, slash key and enter a character to be identified, of course. Um, that's not going to help us, because we can't see the characters. That's how you do it in, um, in ASCII mode. Let's look. Press L to look. I'm on open floor. What is this? This is a scruffy little dog. I don't know that it poses a threat. But here's the second thing I can point out 
well, one of many things I can point out, that is an improvement over Moria. Look at this. Monsters now have a health bar. You can actually see how they're doing. That's his health bar. That will diminish and, I think, change color as he takes damage. We're not going to fight him. No reason to fight a fucking dog. I'm not an asshole. Um, we're a paladin, for God's sakes. Now, you can see over in the top right, we also have, like, our inventory is permanently up. Though At least in the default... Pardon me. The default... Um, layout of the screen our inventory is right up here we have a holy book of prayers a ration of food a word of recall scroll a scroll of protection from evil two wooden torches we can see one monster so this term is uh, devoted to showing off what monsters there are this term which is uh, been overwritten by this thing eh? that's the problem Does this get too big we don't want to maximize this this window get too big is that what happened did I, did I oh for fuck's sakes you see a bit of um oh fuck off. This is this is the one reason I gotta admit I have some problems with Angband, is that uh as as cool as it is that you can do all this, it's also pretty fucking painful to have to manipulate all this. There you go. Alright, that's a little better. Uh let's move it just a tiny bit to the right and move this a tiny bit to the left. Okay, that's gonna be close enough. Alright, um, yeah, what's down here? The scruffy little dog. No battle. We can even see what we're because we're looking at it. We can see down here. No battles to the death are recalled. A thin, flea-ridden mutt growling as you get close. This natural creature lives in the town. It moves a bit erratically at normal speed. A kill of this creature is worth zero points for a first-level character. Nothing is known about its attack. For the record, anything you kill on the first level is worth nothing uh, to kill. I also just need to check the time so I know how I'm doing in terms of this recording. Uh, you can see no objects. You can learn one more prayer. Very important. As a paladin, we begin the game with the ability to learn a prayer. Let's press Shift-G for gain. What is going on, right? Why did that expand that fucking window? Don't expand my windows. All right. Going in here, pressing Shift-G. Shift-G. Right? Oh, it's because we're still in look mode. Shift-G. Study which book. We want to study our holy book of prayers. Press A. And we learn the prayer of detect evil. It's the only prayer we can learn right now. Um, if we actually peruse the shift P, or at least it was in the other thing. Uh, let's look and see. I press question mark to bring this menu up. Uh, what are the commands? F. It used to be shift P for peruse. I am very used to Moria as opposed to Angband at this point. You'll also notice when I looked at that a scruffy dog. It said, "No known battles to the death have been recorded, are known." Um, I've never played 4.13 before. I always played 4.05 as my first uh, time playing 4.1.3. Um, it has changed the game somewhat. It's got some bug fixes. It does have some alterations that I'm not sure I'm thrilled with, like making less traps are less common, etc. But whatever, it is what it is. We're gonna play the most modern version there is. All right. Um, how the fuck do we look at this? Um, how do we read? Shift R? No, that's rest. R is read a scroll. We don't want to do that. P would be pray. We don't want to do that. I don't know how to peruse. I'll have to look it up in between games. We don't need to know it right now. Um, what we also know is that how much gold do we have? Uh, can we see anywhere over here to the left? No. We have a current armor class of two. The higher the better. It's not like D&D. Pressing Shift C to look at my characters to tell me there how much gold I have. Gold, 313 gold to spend. Another thing I can point out right off the bat is that there were only six buildings in Moria. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in here. We have one that sells potions and scrolls. One that sells, I don't know what the hell that is. One that sells armor. One that sells weapons. More oh, weapons. Maybe this is priestly shit. Maybe this is scroll. I don't know what all these things do. Let's go look at some armor because we don't have any, do we? Press I for inventory. No, we have no armor. Let's go get some armor. That's the first priority. Or do we have a weapon? Let's go get a weapon. That's the first priority. <laughs> Alright, I'm using my numpad to move around. Oh, the dogs are biting me. Fuck you, dogs. Alright, well, there you go. Kill those dogs. What's this guy? A scrawny cat. I don't want to kill a cat, man. But I will. <laughs> if it comes near me. Those are like peasants down there. I'm not going to mess with fucking peasants. Again... I'm not here to cause problems, but it's attacking me. What's wrong with these things? What's this guy? A filthy street urchin. Let's stay away from him. Asleep, incidentally, means uh, it hasn't noticed me yet. Again, an improvement over Moria. I didn't used to tell you that. Um, you know what? I might switch to the goddamn 
Let's just do this the simple way. I'm not loving this. Uh, this is how we're going to play for now, guys. We may change that later. Um, that gives us room to expand this quite a bit. There we go. This is a full city map. All these little numbers are entrances to stores. I'm sorry that we wasted time with those graphics. At least you know they're there. We may go back to it at some point just to experiment. We took a damage, incidentally. Let's go into the weapon store. Here's what Ardnell the Beast Slayer is selling. Now, here's something we learned in when we played Moria, and I assume it still applies. Ardnell the Beast Slayer is a half-elf. We are a half-elf. As such, he'll have an innate liking of us, which means he'll sell us shit a little bit cheaper than he otherwise would. Now, he has some awesome weapons here, like a broad axe of Slay Orc. But look at the cost. 3,186. We ain't got that kind of money. We got 300 bucks. And 300 bucks ain't gonna go far either. We gotta buy armor or shit. We could get a scimitar. We could bargain him down. 42 damage. But is there a cheaper weapon? Is he like a broadsword or something? Hell, even a main gauche would do all right for us for now. Let's just grab a main gauche for now. That'll be good enough for our purposes. We're not going deep. We'll come back and get a better weapon later. Let's buy C. Let's go to... I'm gonna move the cursor down to highlight the letter C. Hit enter. Nope. Hit space P P purchase which item? Okay, well, C. Buy a main gauche? Yes. I don't want to pray eighty four though. Um, I'm gonna hit enter and see if it. So I might already bought it for the full price. Okay, it might have turned bargaining off. I don't know. Maybe that's not on in this innately. Um, we now have a main gauche. There are certain things you can turn on and off in this game. Um that you couldn't in you know, press W for wield we wield F, we are now wielding we were wielding a dagger, we are now wielding a main ghost I didn't see we had a dagger, god damn it E for equipment, I guess we do have some stuff okay, well whatever um, let's sell the dagger then, S for sell sell the dagger yes I didn't see how much you sold it for um Bargaining was a big part of Moria, and a lot of people found it boring. I found it boring after a time, so they may have just turned it off innately. You can probably turn it back on with an option, is my guess, somewhere. But why bother? You might not be able to sell... I bet you you can't even sell items. You just give them back to the store. That's another thing they did in a lot of... Uh, a lot of games do now uh, of Angband in that you can't bring things back to the surface to sell them. You can only bring them back to give to the store. Why would you give it? It'll innately identify it if you give it to him. So you can buy it back. It doesn't cost you the cost of identifying something, but you do have to buy it back. Um, but it saves you. You don't always have to come back to the surface to sell shit. It's, it's, a, it's a speed saver, a time saver. Let's buy a m small metal shield. Yep. Purchase, P, H. Buy how many? One. Yes, for 14 gold. I imagine... The cost here is modified based on your charisma score. It just gives you the best price or a, or a good price right off the bat. So you don't have to b bother with bargaining. Purchase J. That's a, a hard leather cap. We'll grab that. And yes. Did I do it? Yep. And we want to purchase a pair of iron shod boots. Purchase M. How many? One. For 50. All right. Let's leave here. I pressed escape. Now, at least assuming it's the same old commands. Let's probably try shift W for where. Direction? Nope. Uh, let's try W for wield. Oh, you just, it's just W for wield now. So let's wield a small metal shield. Let's wield a hard leather cap. Let's wield a pair of iron shab boots. And our armor class you can see has climbed to 13 from 2. We now have a main gauche. We have lots of good stuff. Let's go see if we can't find a uh, which one is the room one that sells like torches and shit. Uh, pressing the slash key, enter a character to be identified. Here we can, because we're in ASCII mode, we can actually enter a character. Let's try four. That's the temple. That's a weaponsmith. Six is magic shop. Eight is home. Oh, it's our house. I forgot about that. We have a home now. A black market. Okay. And that means five must be the general place. No, an alchemy shop. A oh, one. The doy. General store. Let's go to the general store first. What is this dude? I'm not trying to ignore. I'm trying to L for look. That is a filthy street urchin. I don't want to mess with him if I can avoid it. He's not worth any experience, but uh, I mean, he might drop something, but he also might steal from us. Unfortunately, he's guarding the way into this freaking shop. All right, he's coming at me. I'm going to have to kill him. You're dead. Sorry, urchin. All right. 
we can buy some interesting stuff here. Now, another thing, well, we'll come to it when we come to it. Let's buy a cloak, first of all. For one gold, yes. Purchase N, a cloak. Let us also buy, let's say, just two more torches. I don't think we even need them, but just in case. Oh, it's Bilbo, the friendly hobbit, by the way. Apparently Bilbo lives here. M, let's buy two of these. Okay, let's escape from here. Um, let us also W again, and a cloak. We are now up to 14 armor class. We have our torches. I don't know that we need anything else right now. Maybe get a bit of food. How much food do we have? We have a single ration. Let's get some food just in case. Purchase C. Let's buy four of them, so we have five total. For 12 gold, yes, I'll do that. Okay, it's going to take a bit of use getting used to, guys. I have 158 episodes of Moria behind me, and it's going to take a bit of getting used to this again. Now, why would you want a home, you ask? Well, if you come in here and drop shit, it'll still be here later. So if you find something you want to keep for later, great place to store it. You couldn't do that in Moria. Color graphics in the ASCII. Multiple windows, all kinds of crazy stuff going on. You can see our message window down here. This is the last few messages we saw. Again, hopefully that's legible at 1080p. I'll find out. We don't see any objects. Uh, here's the last guy we looked at. We do see a squint-eyed rogue. That's him. Don't want to mess with him. He might drop gold if we killed him, but we don't want to mess with him. Let's head right into the dungeon, right over here. Shift and greater than to head downstairs. You enter a maze of down staircases. Now I want to show you the, the next thing that is very, uh, seems a tame shelter place. That's probably good for us. Here's something very different from, Ang from Moria. As soon as you descend a staircase, you can reascend. We could go up that staircase right now and come back down. Now that's not as simple as it sounds on the surface because Angband and Moria work in a weird way. Every time you enter a level, it creates a brand new level for you. Um, so if we were to go back up and come back down, it would be a totally different dungeon every time we did it. So the bottom line is you always have an easy escape route if you're not happy with your place. And if you just don't like the look of your place, you can just, you can stair scum, as it's called. You go up and down until you like the look of it. Now when you say, what do you like the look of it? You have something down here called level feeling. Uh, it said a tame sheltered place. It has a two. I think the one on the left is our feeling about how, many, how bad the monsters are on a scale from one to five, I think. It could be one to nine. I don't know. One to ten for all I know. Um, but two is low either way. You also get a feeling for the goodness of the objects, uh, how quality they are. Right now we don't have a feeling about that. I'll, I'll fill in more of this data as we go. As with Moria, I learned as I went. We're going to learn more as we go here. Let's take a look around and see what we see. We know that's a, a staircase up. What is... We can't even look at the walls. Interesting. That's an open door. You can only jump from feature to feature with this. Interesting. All right, I can't look at the walls around me. It's kind of weird. Let's look in this room. You can see the room is lit as well. Is everything lit? Do we have a wooden torch burning yet? We don't know that we have one going yet, but for some reason we can still see. Wield. Two wooden torches. Didn't we just buy it? Oh, yeah, we do have one going. You see it right there, burning. Our light source is a wooden torch. For some reason we might, might have started the game with a lit torch. Well, that's weird. But alright. You should probably douse your torch as soon as you start a new game, then you're not wasting time on it. Let's walk around. O to open, and it automatically knew which door I wanted to open. Again, a very simple improvement on the old game. Saves you time. We could try the see if the auto walk works. Wouldn't that be fucking magic? Let me move this this thing out of the way. I'm gonna press period and a direction. Look at that. Unlike Moria, where we couldn't get our auto walk to work personally, it works fine here. So we can just walk really fast this way. That's a centipede, I think. A giant yellow centipede. The first monster we're actually gonna fight. What do we know about it? In the bottom right, it tells us. No battles to the death. It is about four foot long and carnivorous. This natural creature is naturally found at depths of 50 feet, level one, and moves at normal speed. A kill of this monster is worth two experience points for a first level character. It is rarely detected by telepathy. Nothing is known about its attack. Let's just go and kill it. I think we can do that. We feel that there are not but cobwebs here. You can see the other half of the level feeling is filled in. There's not going to be much treasure here, but we don't care. We just came down to get some experience, learn a bit about the game. Look at the nice round room. You never see that in Moria. It woke up. Let's just pass our turn and let it come to us. And we're going to bump to attack. That means to step into it to fight it. We hit it. It flees in terror. We killed it. Awesome. Fuck, I miss these games. <laughs> I, miss the, I miss the Moria Angband series. I'm particularly psyched about playing Angband because it opens a great door for us to... There's so many Angband variants. There's a few Moria variants as well, including Angband. 
but there are so many Angband variants, and I didn't want to play any of them until we've played vanilla Angband. We haven't really talked about what is our objective in this game. In Moria, that objective was to get to level 50, dungeon level 50, which is 2,500 feet, um, and kill the Balrog. In this game, that's the halfway point. <laughs> you need to get down to level 100, or 5,000 feet, and kill Morgoth. It does take place in a very, very loose version of, um, of Tolkien's Middle-earth. Emphasis on loose. There's a few flavorful things from Tolkien's Middle-earth, but really it's just a, a dungeon crawl that kind of has to do with that. If I just bump into this door, is that... Yeah, it automatically opens it. Another time saver. Let's try the auto walk to the left. Auto walk. Auto walk north. Look at that. Auto walk south. Auto walk this way. That would be easier on, easier on my hands. Let me settle back into my chair. This might be a slightly long episode. I'm going to go 15 minutes more. I can't see my... Because I'm recording the entire screen, I can't see my uh, OBS Studio timer unless I stop the game to look at it or go out, go out to look at it, in which case you'll see a weird cascading series of windows that looks bizarre. So I'm not going to do that unless I have to. We'll, see, we'll guesstimate for now, and next time I'll remember to check the time. So period and a direction, it will automatically follow the corridor until it encounters something it has to worry about, like a monster or whatnot. That is what, an ant? That is a large ant with powerful mandibles. It's a soldier ant. Natural creature, 50 feet, moves at normal speed, worth three experience points. It can bash down doors. Rarely detected by telepathy, nothing is known about its attack. Let's uh, let's pass our turn. All right, let's get out a look. No, let's walk towards it. I think it's asleep. We hit it, it flees in terror. It bites us. We killed it. We're down to two. We're down by two hit points. If we pass our turn. Let's, I'm just pressing five. Pass our turn. You see our hit points go back up. You do recover hit points with time, or or while walking around. Ooh, seven rations of food. So we got food by stepping on that. We got got a few rations of food. That's good. You will get hungry. You do have to eat, or you can faint and possibly die of starvation. I still never figured that out. This will be a scroll of some kind. Let's grab it. Now, as with Moria, you'll see uh, a common thing in a lot of roguelikes. Uh, the scroll is unidentified. It is a scroll of Pertus X. Until we either cast it, or I believe bring it back to the surface and give it to a store, in which case they'll identify it for us and we'll forever know what a Pertus X scroll does, and we can buy it back for them. That might be the safer way to do it. Um, well, let's get it. G? G for get. Apparently we automatically got our rations of food, right? We, we did pick those up. I think so. Oh, a kobold? A small kobold. Let's kill it. You can see its health bar going down on the left there. Not sure what the color coding means. It's moving faster than we are. Oh, there we got it. Killed it. So how's our experience doing? We, uh, we have... We're character level 1. Is next mean how many experience points we need to go up a next level? Let's, let's, let's see if we kill something else if that next underneath level goes down. Maybe that's all it is, is a straight countdown. Here's a potion of some sort. Two icky green potions. Let's grab those. We'll give one of them to a store and find out what it does. The reason you don't want to just automatically use them is, a uh, yellow potion. Most of them are good, especially on the early levels. It's not going to be that dangerous, but they can be bad. So why not play smart for now? Um, if you did want to quaff it, a potion, you press Q. You see it brings up an inventory. We don't even have to press asterisk like we did in Moria. It just automatically brings up what do you want to drink. Very sweet. Uh, or R for scroll. We know what those first two are that we started the game with, but we also have that. We should be casting, by the way, our prayer. Cast from which book? Holy Book of Prayers A? Detect evil. Now, it says they're untried. A bunch of things I should tell you about this if you're new to the game. These are the spells in our spell book, our Holy Book of Prayers Beginner's Handbook. We only know the Detect Evil spell. We're going to have to level up to level two before we gain access to the next spell. Um, if we try to cast Detect Evil, the one spell we have, it'll cost us one mana point. We only have one mana point, but the mana, likewise, will come back with time. Um, but um, there's a 30% chance it won't work at all. 70% chance it'll work fine. Now, the very first time you cast any spell, you gain experience points for casting it. So we should be doing that right away anyway. Let's cast Detect Evil. You sense no evil creatures, but welcome to level 2. Look at that, we gained our, uh, our experience to go up. You can see our hit points are now 16 out of 30. Although your maximum hit points immediately go up, 
your minimum hit points or your current hit points do not. Uh, we also now have one extra mana. You can see spell points. That's what it's called down there. Zero out of two. Um, let's learn a new spell. I think we can. Let's press Shift G. No, I guess not. I thought we could learn it at level two, but I guess not. So we're, we're doing all right, guys. We're already character level two. Another ten minutes. Oh, fuck. There's a soldier ant. We got it. Or did we just scare it? Scared it bad enough that it's running. I think it's faster than we are. I lost it. You little bugger. All right, well, whatever. If this is like Moria as well, monsters do regenerate on levels, so it's not like we're... Uh, and plus, we could, we could just go straight up the goddamn stairs and come back down and have a brand new dungeon level one. Another scroll, let's get that. We can bring it up and identify it. The only way you're going to learn what the scrolls are is to use them or cast an identify spell with an identify scroll, say, or a spell if you're a mage. Or bring them outside and get them identified. A giant white mouse. These guys, as you can see in the bottom right, um, it doesn't tell us we don't know it yet. We don't know anything about it, but uh, it does... Uh, they breed really, really rapidly. They create multiple copies of themselves. We're not careful. So we want to make sure that they uh, they don't have a chance to do so. Let's continue exploring the entirety of this level. Uh, before we return to the surface, but that's all we'll do is dungeon level 1, then we'll come back down and try and get down to dungeon level 2. Probably. Maybe we'll straight dive. I don't know. We have some scrolls to identify. If we want to play smart, we should go out. It's not like we have far to go to get out and back. That's another staircase up. You see less than means less than the level you're on, i.e. we go from level 1 to level 0. We could go right out if we wanted to. We are confused. There's a wall in the way. The Great Mushroom Patch releases spores at you. You are more confused. So it looks like we're looking at a... Right here. It's hard to differentiate, actually, from the from the rest of it, but that's a comma. Uh, it is a Great Mushroom Patch. Yum. It looks quite tasty. Um, what do we know about it? Does not deign to chase intruders means it does not move. It's immobile. A kill of it for a second level character is worth half an experience point. It is not detected by telepathy. It is hurt by fire and cannot be frightened, confused, or slept. It can release spores to confuse... Uh, looks like a 1d4 damage does to me when it does so, I'm thinking. Or maybe it confuses me for 1 to 4 turns, and there's a 62% chance of it doing that, averaging 2 damage. Um, when we're confused, I don't think we can choose where we walk. When we're trying to walk away here, we're just walking in a random direction, but we coincidentally walked the direction we needed to to kill it. You see we're still confused. When you're confused in this game... Oh, there's another one. Oh, we are still confused. Um... If you pass your turn, nothing will happen. But if you press any directional key, you'll move in a random direction. As you level up, not only do you need more experience to level up, it looks like we need 19 more experience points to level up to level 3. Not only do you need more experience, um, you also... Oh, we didn't get a shovel, damn it. Can we clear this out? It's not Shift-X. Is it Control-X? Note as saving the game. Press Return or Escape. I might have just booted this out. If I did, we'll call this the video here. Press any other key to continue. All right, here's the screen I was warning you about. We're gonna get every time we uh we start and stop a video. <laughs> I can edit this out. I won't for the first time here. I'll let you see it. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop recording. I'm gonna start recording again, and we're gonna make a, a second video in this game.